Okay, Dan, um, I just want to kind of, we talked about uh, what is truth, why Pollitt said that in, in that kind of context. Uh, they did uh, the false accusation uh, that he was trying to usurp Caesar uh, still kind of uh, remained, and that was the premise of the execution, the false accusation. You want to expand on that whole thing? Well, when we look at what happened there, um, you know, Jesus was going under a little bit of a questioning, an arraignment at the time. Um, he was being accused, you know, of acting as a subversive element or uh, entity that was uh, going to subvert the power of Caesar. Uh, it's quite unique that at the time uh, when Augustus Caesar uh, had come forth, not only just to say, let's register tax the world. Remember, he said world. He wasn't saying the earth. He was taxing a concept of secular uh, with secular title. But uh, when we when we look at what was happening, Caesar at the time, the Augustus, uh, he had taken on the title the common the, the savior of the common people of Rome while Jesus had entered into the scene as the savior of the world. So, because he was going to bring man back to the beginning, back to the Genesis, and write what Adam had lost through uh, his uh, treason to God, uh, stepping out of fidelity, and what his obligation would have been as the creation to the creator. So uh, when we're when we're going down this uh, you know arraignment that was going on, they put an accusation over Jesus' head. Now you have to go back a little bit. You have to understand that when uh, when Mary was with child, uh, Joseph, and according to the scripture, did not make Mary public. These are key words that are put in the scripture because public is within the tax scheme uh it's not what people think it's what it is publicans were tax collectors so john q public is just like saying john q last name or john q taxpayer uh and so he was never registered mary and joseph were certainly en route to do that according to what was going on at the time but they did not. There was no evidence in the scripture that they uh, brought Jesus into the registration. And in fact, that's what led to Herod actually uh, doing what was called infanticide, because we use the word infant when we're talking about war titles like surnames, arms. And so children born under that type of system are known as infants that are in the infantry. And so therefore, they committed an infanticide um, because they were just going to make sure that they had wiped out every child male in order to wipe out the Messiah. So they went out and, you know, basically had executed everything and anything within a certain age group to ensure the fact they had not basically uh, left any child that happened to be in the jurisdictional uh, realm living um, at that time to escape death so that they could wipe out this uh, Messiah that was coming to save the world. So, so in, a sense, in a sense, Dan, um, you know, the, the I find no fault in him is that he was not part of the public and therefore he was not going to usurp the public authority. In that's a right. Um, as we've discussed before, when you look up uh, birth name, uh, you know, and it doesn't occur in every dictionary, but uh, we, we at least were afforded the opportunity to see it uh, in an English dictionary, the the uh, fifth edition of the of the uh, Canadian Law Dictionary, uh, basically stated, or Dictionary of Canadian Law stated that a surname, uh, or sorry, a birth name was the surname um, of the, in the jurisdiction where the person was born. So we have to realize that it's got to do with the mask, the persona, uh, what is added on to one's real name, one's truthful name. Uh, Canadian Gage Dictionary uh, even goes into that definition, says that a surname is name added to one's real name. 
So we're already knowing that we're operating in a fiction when we use these legal additions. And so they are accusations um, because there's something that would require consent um, because of what comes with them. But at that time, Jesus was being accused of being a legal king that was going to subvert the legal Roman world and Caesar. And so that was the accusation. And his enemies, who wanted to make sure that they had gotten rid of him because he was about to end the money changing in the temple, not only of this physical temple, but of the temple of the mines. And so the business was about to be shut down, the secular profiting that those false priests uh, were engaged in, that he basically was exposing as snakes and vipers, were now getting quite uh, at unrest with Jesus. And so the only way they could get rid of him was to put a false accusation on him and then bring him through some mock-up trial. And uh, that's what you're seeing here in the scripture uh, regarding the arraignment of Christ. And so uh, when he put the accusation, it says they placed an accusation over his head. An accusation is not truth until it's proven. And so he, they had no proof. Uh, Pontius had questioned Jesus regarding was he a king? Um, and of course, he was, he had said that, you know, you have confirmed that. Yes, I'm a king. But he was really saying, I know what you are saying, but it's not really what you mean. Because Pontius's question to Jesus would have been based on accusing him in a legal sense of being something de facto against the Roman Empire, but he was actually in an ultimate uh, supremacy of God uh, de jure sense. Uh, he was under divine right to be that king, and he was going to fulfill the will of God uh, as the anointed of God. So the accusation placed over his head was in error because they were implying it in a legal sense there would be no different than the birth records that are filled out by the parents where they're implying that you have a legal title and you're about to trespass on the legal jurisdiction of the legal crown of which after the birth, death and resurrection of Christ, um, all who accept him uh, basically are the property of the highest authority uh, under God and his anointed son, Jesus Christ. So that's why we would refer to your first name in first place as the Christian name. Uh, it is the ultimate name, consider it a supernatural name. And so therefore it is at the highest level of authority. So in the accusation, they basically went ahead with a false accusation and error and therefore they were in error and then jesus basically having been in truth and perfection canceled out that error which fulfilled what god's will was and so even despite the fact that the romans executed him as did uh the pharisees who conspired against him they actually in essence uh did exactly what would have happened based on the minds of those who are enemies of the true God, but uh, it fulfilled the will of God and th their actual error uh, actually finalized and, and brought God's will to completion for mankind uh, by actually eliminating the penalty of death um, that had been placed on mankind through the sin of Adam. Uh, so anyways, we can see what's going on when we take a look at it a little closer, but they did put an accusation over Jesus' head, and it was false because it was being used in a legal sense that he was going to be a legal king. Um, and it's, of course, nothing is different. They will persecute you as they persecuted me, Jesus said. So, of course, they put an accusation over your head at a time you're in the most innocent position um, at birth, and then they stick a false birth name over your head and hope that you will plead guilty and deny the Messiah and take a legal elective path. So, uh, uh, you know, there's 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 a simplicity to scripture if you see it, 
Um, but uh, when we look at the, even the English law system, it is based on an accusatory system of law, and that's what you'll find throughout the world. Um, it's all based on the same system that you that you saw happening under the arraignment of Christ. All right, Dan, thank you for explaining that. Appreciate that.